Welcome friends. In this tutorial, we will study about introduction to ASP.NET. ASP.NET is a software package which is used to create dynamic web applications. ASP.NET works on the top of HTTP protocol and it uses the HTTP command and policies to set up browser to server two-way communication and cooperation. ASP.NET is used to produce interactive data-driven web application over the internet. ASP.NET Web Form extends the event-driven model of interaction to the web applications. The browser submits a web form to the web server and the server returns a full markup page or a HTML page in the response. All client-side user activities are forwarded to the server for stateful processing. In this figure, we can see how clients send a request to the server and how server respond to that request and send a markup or a HTML code to the client. Thank you. Welcome friends. In this video we will see how to install Visual Studio. For installing Visual Studio, we need a setup file of Visual Studio. You can download it from internet. Open your setup file and run it. New window will be open. Click on install Microsoft Visual Studio. It will take some load time to set up. Now we can see installation wizard is open. It will also take some time next and you will see where you want to store your Visual Studio. Give next and now installation will be started. It will take 20 or more than 20 minutes to complete setup. So go for coffee and come after some times. After that new window will be pop up press exit. Setup is completed. Thank you. More than 20 minutes to complete setup. So go for coffee and come after some times. After that new window will be pop up press exit. Setup is completed. Thank you. Welcome friends. In this video we will learn how to develop our first application. We have installed Visual Studio 2010 in our machine. So to open the Visual Studio, go to Start menu in Programs, select Visual Studio 2010 and Microsoft Visual Studio 2010. So it will open Visual Studio. For creating a new website, go to File menu in New tab, select a website. It will ask you to select uh, in which language you want to create your website. There are two languages in .NET, Visual Basic and, and Visual C Sharp. Select a Visual C Sharp and select ASP.NET empty website. Select the folder where you want to store your website. I have selected my folder on the desktop called Hello World. Press OK website is created. Now go to Solution Explorer which is right side of Visual Studio IDE. Click on Solution Bar and select New, new Item and Add New Web Form. You can give here your own name to Web Form but we have given default. Every ASP.NET web page have extension .aspx. Now click on add button. It will generate some code. There are two types of views, design views and source views. You can switch over to design view when you want to see your application in design mode. Now I want to display hello world in my web page. So I have typed hello world. Now switch over to source view. In the form tag, automatically div tag is generated and div tag contain hello world. Now to run the website, go to the debug menu and select start without debugging. So this was our first application called hello world. Thank you. Welcome friends. In this tutorial, we will see how to create dynamic website. We have already created hello world example. 
so we have now a website which is already created but now we are going to convert that website into dynamic website go to the solution explorer and click on default.xpx we have one code file default.aspx.cs which is a code file for this page default.axps double click on that dot cs file we can see one code is there in the dts file now for creating a dynamic application we now create one variable of protected type after the data type and will give message is equal to hello world means now message variable contains hello world now we want to display this dynamic variable in our web page so in the source write less than character and percentage look asp.net has automatically completed the tag now write is equal to and your variable name means message intelligence will be display to select message now go to run select run without debugging and press ok we can see we have created the website which is a dynamic because we have passed the hello world dynamically at the coding time from the code thank you welcome friends in this tutorial we will see how to connect database to our application first open the server explorer which is a left side of ide there is a one data connection tab right click on data connection and click add connection it will show one window in which various database type is exist select microsoft sql server database file i have created one database and and i will connect the database with this application so click on browse button and browse the database where it is located i have located my database into sample folder and student database click on open and click on test connection to test the connection we can see test connection is succeeded press okay and then again okay database will be loaded just expand the student database expand the tables we can see there is a one table called student master if you want to open the table definition then right click on table and then select open definition we can see various columns or fields in the database so this way we can connect our database to our application thank you welcome friends in this video tutorial we will see how to present data set in our web application so to present the data in our web page first go to solution explorer we can see there is a new folder called app underscore data we can add this folder by clicking on our project add asp.net folder and in that folder application underscore data i have put my database in this folder so when i click on student database it will automatically connect my database to the application so we don't need to connect each time database with our application now i want to display list of students so I am going to print 
student list in h1 tag let's see student list in header tag is printed i will also set a title of the web page students now go to design view so now we will see how to show data list in our web page go to server explorer now drag student master table on your page we can see one grid view is generated with the sql data source now let's see by running this application press ctrl f5 or directly by run button we can see the data in the database is on web page so we can see all the data and all the fields of the table is generated and it is displayed on the web page now let's see what code is generated in the source for a data grid view we can see html code is generated which is a data grid view and all the field is derived from the database id name address gender etc etc one more control called sql data source is generated in sql data source all, all the configuration of deriving data set from the database is generated we can see query of the selection is also there and one connection string which is the most important part of the database we can see connection string name is student connection string this string is from web config file so let's go to the solution explorer and open web config file there is a one connection string student connection string 1 complete path of the database is given in the connection string or database in application underscore data folder so there is a sql express is needed there is a one attribute called integrated security if you want to provide authentication at a type at a time of database access then we have to set this field as a false but we don't want to do that so this is a way of presenting a data set from the database thank you welcome friends in this tutorial we will study about forms in the web form we can place various elements like a text box buttons radio button and check box and other also so in this example we will see how how to send the data to the server using the forced back so let's create a code for a form first i'm writing h1 tag in h1 tag this is the example of form now go to toolbox and select label control which is a server control when double click on the label of a toolbox the code of label will be automatically generated now go to design view and click on label control and right click on label control and select properties properties are the various attributes to set various views and format the label id property is used to identify the label at the coding time uniquely so i am going to set this property with form label now from the toolbox i am also adding one more control it is a button button is added automatically and i am setting its properties which is text properties which i want to display in button hit me now double click on the button the code of form so let's run and check now let's click on the button 
we can see the value of the label is changed this is an example of form so this way we can use form and we can retrieve data from the text box and we can request using that data to the server and server will respond to our request thank you of form so let's run and check now let's click on the button we can see the value of the label is changed this is an example of form so this way we can use form and we can retrieve data from the text box and we can request using that data to the server and server will respond to our request thank you of form so let's run and check now let's click on the button we can see the value of the label is changed this is an example of form so this way we can use form and we can retrieve data from the text box and we can request using that data to the server and server will respond to our request thank you head data to the server and server will respond to our request thank you hello friends in this tutorial we will see how to separate presentation logic and the code so go to the solution explorer and add new item and select web form below select place code in a separate file this will create separate file for the coding change the name of the page separate example and click on add now go to solution explorer we can see separate example is added to our solution and we, when we expand that separate solution it will show separate example dot aspx dot cs which is the core file for the separate example dot aspx we can also see in the source code which is the se separate example dot aspx in the beginning we can see code file which is linked to this or source code file this is because we want to link our various elements as controls to our code file so as we have discussed in previous example same example i will do in this tutorial but using a separate code file so let's do once again go to design view press enter go to toolbox get a one label set a property of label to any lbl sap now add a set the property of button to hit me and double click on the button we can see the separate code file is generated the event button one underscore click in previous example we have seen that the code is generated in same source code file but in this example we, we can see that the code is generated in separate file called separate example dot aspx dot cs now we will change the property of label lbl shape dot text is equal to anything we want to print this is example and let save by control s and run control f5 let's hit the button you can see the property of label is changed thank you welcome friends in this tutorial we will see how to create a web form for data entry type application we have already seen web forms but we didn't have seen how to enter the details or how to create the form which accept the details of particular data 
so now let's create that type of form go to solution explorer and i have created one web form so i have open web form dot aspx which is created by me now here i am going to create one simple table for better formatting of the form in the div tag let's create a table which contains two columns and four rows now i need a four rows so i will just copy and paste now i want to add the details of the student information so i'm writing various details like a name of the students address of the students standard of the students and gender of the students in these columns i will put a standard web control and we want to make a data entry application then there is a two options one is building using standard html controls and other is using server control which is a asp.net controls there is a text box control and the value of text box is john martin which is response from the server and it is automatically converted into the html form so this is about data entry and data entry application in the asp.net using asp.net server controls thank you there is a text box control and the value of text box is john martin which is response from the server and it is automatically converted into the html form so this is about data entry and data entry application in the asp.net using asp.net server controls thank you there is a text box control and the value of text box is john martin which is response from the server and it is automatically converted into the html form so this is about data entry and data entry application in the asp.net using asp.net server controls thank you there is a text box control and the value of text box is john martin which is response from the server and it is automatically converted into the html form so this is about data entry and data entry application in the asp.net using asp.net server controls thank you there is a text box control and the value of text box is john martin which is response from the server and it is automatically converted into the html form so this is about data entry and data entry application in the asp.net using asp.net server controls thank you there is a text box control and the value of text box is john martin which is response from the server and it is automatically converted into the html form so this is about data entry and data entry application in the asp.net using asp.net server controls thank you data entry application in the asp.net using asp.net server controls thank you hello friends in this tutorial we will study about how to handle postbacks we have already created one student information form which contain name address standard and gender of the students now we will show these inputted fields into the labels so now first we will create label controls into our forms so let's create first label controls add the label control from the toolbox and set its id value to lbl name copy the label and paste it and set its property value to lbl address take another label control and set its property value to lbl standard 
and take one more set id to lbl gender now we want to change this labels text property to appropriate field which is inputted means now we want to handle post back event of submit button and we will code it so now we want to give lbl name dot text and we will assign value into this label from text box called txt name dot text so when we input value into text box and click on the button then label lbl name will contain the value of the text box now similarly we assign values to other labels from its appropriate text box lbl gender dot text is equal to txt gender dot text lbl standard dot text is equal to txt standard dot text now let's run and check john martin in the name address is wall street standard is 3 and gender is male now click on the submit button when we click on the submit button we can see the values of the label is changed dynamically and at the run time so when we click on the submit button the post back event is executed and it changes the value of all label controls so using the post back we can handle various event by which we can change the contents of a label control and properties of the various controls thank you data binding expression are used to bind the data with the various type of control without using postbacks you can see we have taken the three labels called lbl name lbl address lbl standard and lbl gender so we will bind the data which is inputted from these text boxes to these labels so go to the source of this page now in the control asp label write a text which is a attributes or a property of the label control and is equal to less than sign percentage sign visual studio will automatically complete this take or this block and then write hash after that write here controls the name from which you want to take input for example we want to take input from txt name dot text we must have to write here exact name of the control because here intellisense is not provided by the visual studio ide so we have to care about this now we will do same thing for other controls also copying just and pasting to others but after that changing the text control here is it txt address other is txt standard and then txt gender now go to the design view now click anywhere in the page so it will show code behind now you can see the page load event page load event is executed each time when page is loaded when post back event of particular control is executed then page load event also will be executed so to enable the data binding expression we must have to call data binding method so write page dot data binding braces and semicolon it will call the data binding method now go to the web form and run now enter the data in the text boxes john martin address is wall street standard is three and gender is male now click on the submit button we can see 
data from the text box is delivered or copied or assigned to the label controls so using data binding we can do actions like a submit or post back event but it will just assign the value not execute code so this was a data binding expressions thank you welcome friends in this tutorial we will study about variables variables are used to store some value you can see we have created one page in this page you can see there are two text boxes first is for accepting first number second is for accepting second number in this application we will do addition subtraction division and multiplication operations so when we enter the two numbers and click on the plus button it will show the output of the addition in the result text box so let's do this using variables for that first click on the plus button and generate click event of plus button it will generate code or event for the plus button now in the class not in the button event in the class declare two variables integer number 1 and integer number 2 and then declare one float variable called result now we will utilize these variables there are different types of data types as per our need we have to define our variables for particular data types now we will store output of the first text box into number 1 so write number 1 is equal to txt number 1 dot text and semicolon the text box num text box number 1 dot text will return a string value and we are storing this value into integer type variable this is not valid so we have to convert this string value into the integer value so one function called convert dot to integer 32 or 16 anyone can you use is used and pass string as a parameter which is to be converted same as write number 2 same as for variable number 2 we have just copied and change the values of text boxes and variables add buttons a click event i want to add the two number so i will do the sum of two numbers and with i will store it in some variable here it is a result so number 1 plus number 2 now same operation we will perform for other for example for subtraction for multiplication for division and all of four for subtraction we will same utilize same code we will just change sign of operation but at a time of division we have to care about type conversion when we are dividing one integer number by other integer number then it will result integer but we want to but we want to store float value so convert it to the float using casting so we have completed our program give the inputs first we will perform addition we can see the output multiplication addition subtraction division and multiplication so this is the use of variable thank you welcome friends in this chapter we will see use of loops in this example we have taken a one text box which accept how many times you want to execute loops means number of iterations we have taken one button which will generate loop execution when we click on button loop will be start to execute and one text area it will display the iteration of the loop so let's code the generate loop click event there are various loops for example while loop do loop and for loop in for loop we have to create initialization first we can initialize 
by integer any variable name which is a control variable we have to initialize with any number and column after that give condition we have a condition which is inputted in the text box we will give i less than or equal to and we will first convert the text box the string value to integer convert dot to integer 32 txt time text and after that we will increment the value of loop control variable loop control variable is incremented by one when loop executed one time we will write the iteration of the loop in the text box so let's write txt loop dot text this is the shorthand assignment operator we will print this is ith iteration and give slash n which is a new line character and semicolon now let's run the program and see the output enter the times you want to execute a loop suppose we want to execute six times then give six and click on generate loop we can see at each iteration the string is printed this is the one iteration and up to six iteration so this is the use of for loop thank you welcome friends in this tutorial we will study about functions function is a block of code which can we call repeatedly so now let's define functions we have one web page which is student information form now i want to design function on when i click that function must be called so so that function retrieve the value of the page which is entered in the form so to define a function i will give first access specifier after that return type and then function name which is retrieve and you can give optional arguments in this example i want to just assign values to the label which is entered in the text boxes so lbl name dot text is equal to txt name dot text txt address dot text is equal to lbl address dot text is equal to txt address dot text now we have assigned values to the label now we have to call this method so to call this method just write function name which is retrieve and and braces now let's define another function called clear which is also public in clear function we will clear the contents of the text box so txt standard dot text is equal to null value txt txt gen dot text is equal to null value and all other text box we will assign null values so it will clear the text boxes now go to the web form which is a design page and add new one button set its property to button clear to button clear and set it text property to clear now on the clear button the click event we will call clear function now let's see output first we are entering different details in the form we are submitting and we can see we got the output into the labels now i want to create the data which is entered in the text box so i will click on the clear button and data will be cleared so this way we can define the functions we can also define parameterized function and function with written type so this is the fund of c sharp thank you welcome friends in this tutorial we will study about how to create web controls web controls are the special features provided by sp.net when we want to define some common features then we can use web controls 
for example in our page there is a, some links and headers these links and headers are common to all pages so we have to copy just this code and we have to put this code in all pages but if we don't want to do this then we can use web user control so web user control saves or lots of times and it can be reusable if we change the user control then change will be reflected in all other pages that inherits that user control so to create a web user control go to solution explorer and right click on solution add new item and select web user control give name to web user control we are giving header the extension of web user control is dot .ascx place this code in separate file and click on add so we can see one control line is generated which shows language is called c sharp and code file is equal to header dot .ascx .cs, which is or post back code file so now we go to our web forms and we open the source we just cut our header and put it in user control now let's see design view of user control we can see we have created this user control now if we want to put this user control in our form then go to our form put your cursor when you want to Put user control go to solution explorer just drag this user control to that cursor you can see user control is placed in our web form so now we can use this user control in other forms also so this save lots of time in our web application and it is the main use of web user control now let's run it and see what is the output we can see user control is at the header of the page so this is the main use of user control thank you hello friends in this tutorial we will see how to register web user control there are two ways to place our user control in our page one is by directly dragging and dropping in our page and other is by registering user control to our page we will see second method for registering a user control for example we want to register our user control for this page so to register user control first type is less than sign we can see the intellisense will automatically give us some options select a register options press enter and then write src means i am getting my user control file from the source which is in solution explorer so click on source and give assignment or a is equal to operator the list of user control will be display if the user control in the folder then you can pick up by url but all user control is in solution so please select now we have to give tag prefix so tag prefix is the name of user control we are giving uc1 for user control 1 and we have to give tag name which is header so there is a no error display because if there is an error then our visual studio will display error automatically now we have to put the user control in our web form take cursor to the point where you want to put the user control type u c 1 so now intellisense will be display now intellisense will display u c 1 header so select it type run at is equal to server notice if we don't write run at is equal to server then this server control will not be run at the server so when we run the application it will not display so take a look at at design and let's run we can see we have successfully placed user control using registering manually 
we can click on forms we can click on web forms we can switch over to forms so user control will be will be look as it is but contents of the page will be changed thank you welcome friends in this tutorial we will study about various validation controls and we will learn how to validate the input of the forms lsp.net provides special controls called validation controls to validate the input of the form we can utilize that validation controls so go to the toolbox and in the validation tab you can see there are various types of validation controls each validation controls have special purpose we want to validate the name input so get cursor near to name text box and go to the toolbox and pick up a required field validator now we have to set the different properties of required field validator so right click on it and set different properties first we will set id property of required field validator to rq name and then control to validate property this property shows which control you want to validate here we want to validate txt name so select txt name after that which error message you want to display so we want to display please enter name after that you can set formatting of validation controls we are setting red color for error message one more property called validation group each validator control needs validation group so we are setting here one we will see use of this property later now we are just copying paste and we are validating other types of text box so setting just properties now standard text box contains numeric value we want if we want to validate that please enter numeric value in the standard text box then we can do this by using regular expression validator so we will see use of regular expression validator also so go to the toolbox and pick up the regular expression validate set its different properties Validation expression is the most important property of this regular expression validator. We want to validate for a numeric value. So type 0, 0, hyphen, 9, closing square bracket and star. Set its validation group property to 1 and set submit buttons validation group property to 1. Now let's run this application. When we click on the submit button without entering details, we can see all the validator shows error message. If we enter the detail in the text box, then that error message will be invisible. Suppose we enter the value in the standard, which is not numerical, then required field will not display error, but please enter valid standard. It will display error and if we enter valid standard then it will also will be invisible so this is the use of validation control thank you welcome friends in this tutorial we will see how to control validation display message we have already validate our form now we want to display our error message in interactive way so let's first set required fields and other validators text property to star after giving text property to star go to the toolbox and select validation summary control this control is used to show the validation summary in which which controls are showing errors so go to the property validation summary we don't want to change the validation summary's id but go to the show message box property when we want to display error in the form of message box then you can set this property to true and set the show summary property to true because we don't want to the display errors in the form of text set the validation group property to one now let's run press submit without entering details so we can see one message box is pop up 
in which various errors are written. Please enter name, please enter address and others. Now you can see standard controls contains two validators. One is for required field and one is a regular expression. When regular expression is not in use, then it leaves some space. So we want to remove this space. So let's do the go to the required field validations properties and give display property to dynamic. Give each controls display property to dynamic. Now run the application. Now you can see we don't have validate standard and it doesn't show the space. So this way we can control our display messages. We can also give various format by using CSS, by using styles. And we can also give color formats to our validation message when we are not displaying using text boxes. Thank you. Welcome friends. In this tutorial, we will study about view state. We have created one new page called viewState.spx. In this page, we will show the use of view state. In all web applications, whenever a web page is processed at the server, the page is created from scratch. In traditional web application, the server discards the page information after processing and sending page to the browser. Because the page information is not preserved on the server, the web page is called stateless. The framework automatically saves the state of the page and its current properties and the state of the server control and their base property which each round trip using the view state. So this is the use of view state. Now let's see how view state works. So we are taking one combo box which is a drop down list adding items to the combo box now we have added three items set its enable postback property to true because we want to enable postback because we want to execute event on the item changed event of the combo box now i want to show which color is displayed so for that take one label we have taken one label now on the item changed event of the drop down list write label one dot text is equal to drop down one dot selected weighted. So this is the use of view state implicitly by server. Let look at the view source. We can see one input type which is a hidden is used to storing a view state. And it contains some encrypt encrypted information in base 16 which we cannot understand but sp.net server decrypt very easily so this is about view state we can also pass view state to other pages by creating view state object but view state use for only post method we cannot utilize view state into the gate method so this is the limitation which can be resolved by session which we will show in next video thank you we can also pass view state to other pages by creating view state object but view state use for only post method we cannot utilize view state into the gate method so this is the limitation which can be resolved by session which we will show in next video thank you welcome friends in this tutorial, we will study about session. Session is used to pass the information between the web pages. So, session is a one type of object which stores some information. We can access that information from anywhere from any page. The session object is used to store data across multiple requests for each user. When a session begins, a unique key assigned to the user. ASP maintains a session state for each user by providing the client with this unique key. This key is stored in HTTP cookie that client sends to the server on each request. The server can then read the key from the cookie and reveal the server session. So now in this example we will create session from one page 
and we will retrieve that session in another page. You can see I have taken one text box in which user will type some information and we will pass that information to another page when we click on the create session button. When we click on the button, we will create session on the click event of this button and I have created one more page called retrieve session.aspx. In this page, when we click on the retrieve session button, the session which is passed from the create session.aspx page is retrieved and the value of session is assigned to this label. So let's learn how to create session and retrieve it. Click on the create session button. Session is a object we can create using session start the square bracket. We have to pass index which is a unique key. So we will set unique key user name and we will assign this user name to some information which is passed from the text box which is text box one dot text so the session is created now I want to retrieve this session information so go to the another page called retrieve session dot SPX and double click on the retrieve session button I want to show the session information in label so type the label name LBL session dot text is equal to session object index which we have passed in create session page which is user name close the square bracket and we have to convert this session into two string so convert with two string method and give semicolon now we have created a session so now I want to redirect to page retrieve session dot ASPX for this response dot redirect method is used in which we have to pass the argument as a page name with its extension which is retrieve session dot ASPX now let's run it we are passing John Martin and let's click on create session page is redirect to retrieve session dot ASPX now click on retrieve session button which will be retrieve the session you can see John Martin is retrieved which is we have passed in the session so this is the use of session thank you